This video is by Straight Goods News, sgnews.ca. I'm pleased to be here as we liberal choose the next generation of the Liberal Party leadership. Our party has reflected the values and aspiration of Canadian for generations. Today begins the renaissance of the Liberal Party, a party that believes that government can be a force for good in society. A party, a party that believes that social justice and fiscal responsibility can and should go hand in hand. A party that believes in the protecting in protecting our environment. A, a party that believes in making our country open to the world. A party that believes in the United Nations. A party that stood, always stood, for a strong and united Canada. Think of some of the things we Liberals have accomplished over the last 50 years. Mr. Pearson brought in Medicare, Canada Pension Plan and the Canadian flag. Mr. Trudeau, gave us his vision of a just society, bilingualism, the Charter of Rights and Freedom, and repatriate the Constitution. Our government, our government, balanced budgets, investment in research and universities, Kyoto, Clarity Act, and no to the war in Iraq. My friend, under a new liberal leader, the best is yet to come. <laughs> Losing a seat at the Security Council of the United Nations never, never would have happened under Lester B. Pearson, <laughs> under Pierre Elliott Trudeau, <laughs> under Brian Maroney, and under me, and my government. That embarrassing loss had nothing to do with the so-called principal foreign policy. It is the result of a failed foreign policy. I'm tired to go around the globe and the people are all asking me, what is happening to Canada? And I just tell them, wait a few years. <laughs> Un unlike under the Conservatives, Canada's role in the world must be far more than just military. For example, for example, we have to stop retreating from our presence in Africa. While, while the world is knocking at Africa's door, Canada is packing our bags and leaving. Yeah. When I went to China two times with Team Canada, with delegation of premiers, and hundreds of business people. We signed deals with worth billions of dollars for goods and services. We sold, for example, advanced technology to can-do nuclear reactor. 
when Stephen Harper went to China. He came home, he came home with two rented, he came home with rented two panda bears. <laughs> After huge deficits, we balanced the books. And now we're back in deficit. We had surpluses in balance of payment and in trade that Canada does not have anymore. We made massive investment in knowledge economy. We refused bank mergers and deregulation. We set Canada on a course that enable us as a country to withstand the world economy crisis of 2008. Stephen Harper did not accomplish this. He inherited it. Mr. Flaherty bragged. Mr. Flaherty bragged about our banking system. Mr. Flaherty, let me remind you that it was your party and he the leader who gave me hell in those days for those decisions. And you still dare to brag about it and not telling the truth? <laughs> My fellow liberals, today marks the beginning of the end of this conservative government. Friends, my friends, Canada needs, what Canada needs, in fact, is a new, young, ambitious, activist, forward-looking liberal government. Under new liberal government, you can be certain that the role of the national government will be more than just building jails, especially when crime rates are going down. <laughs> I'm excited that we are choosing a new leader today who will meet the challenges of tomorrow, who will carry the torch of the liberal values of compassion, trust, openness, inclusion, responsibility, and generosity. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames and messieurs, In 1903, I said, we have a lot of work to do when we did it. Today, I say again, we have a lot of work to do and we'll do it. À la victoire et vive le Canada. Merci. Yeah.